Good evening and welcome to River Life Church International's Bible study here on this beautiful Wednesday day here in Dickinson, North Dakota. So glad that you would join us here tonight and um, just just hope you had a great Christmas and and a happy new year and and I can't believe we're right in the middle of January already, but you know, time just seems to keep on moving forward and and we praise God, we thank him for his goodness in 2021 and and for what he is going to do. He's the same God. He's a good God and he has something new and wonderful for us this year going forward as a church and then also as individuals and his children. He has wonderful plans for his children. So we're going to continue on the thought of the spirit is moving, the fruit of the spirit of gentleness, gentleness. And uh, we're going to continue on this. We have one more week of the fruit of the spirit and um, we're just we just, it's been an enriching time of just really studying the fruit of the Spirit and what, what the Holy Spirit wants to produce within each and every one of us. It's so powerful. It's wonderful. Um, it is exciting what he wants to do. So let's open up this time together in prayer before we get into this study. Heavenly Father, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for this study. I thank you for what you are doing in our lives and in your fruit, your characteristics, what you want to produce in us. That's going to make a real difference in our lives and, and then those around us who we interact with, both close and far. It really has a potential to do something wonderful in our lives and in the lives of those around us. And we don't always know, but God, we know what we do know is that you're up to something always. And that you want to do, use us and you want to do amazing things in us and through us. And Lord, let us be open to your leading. Let us be open to what you would have to say here tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we've been in Galatians chapter 5. And, and just in recap before we get into tonight's thought, a little bit of a nugget here tonight. And Galatians 5.16 says, I say then. Walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The importance, we talked about this weeks past, the importance of walking in the spirit. If we are walking in the spirit, in God's will and his, his desire for us as his children to walk in his ways, that we're not going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yes, the lust of the flesh is there, but we won't fulfill it if we are walking in the Spirit. Also in Galatians chapter 5, verse 25, it says, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. It's so important to live in the Spirit and to walk in the Spirit. And then we know in Galatians 5, 22, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We're talking about gentleness here tonight. Talking about gentleness. The importance of being gentle. And not a gentleness that we produce in our own strength, our own ability, but a, a, a gentleness that only the Holy Spirit can produce in us. And what the very thing the very gentleness that the Holy Spirit so desires to produce in every one of God's children. Gentleness in this passage has the meaning of to show kindness, be friendly, compassionate, considerate, sympathetic, humane, and also kind. I'm going to say that again. The meaning in this and with the word gentleness in the original means to show kindness, be friendly, compassionate, considerate, sympathetic, humane, and kind. So important. And when you think about these 
attributes, these characteristics of the word gentleness, we can't help but to think about what are the opposite. And what's really interesting, and it's not by accident, but it's, it's put in there on purpose in the, the verses prior to the, the fruit of the Spirit, but also the works of the flesh. And some of those that, that are mentioned in verses 19 through 21, not all of them, but just some of them that go in and, and that are quite opposite of gentleness. Paul lists some of those, work of the flesh, right there in, in, in the scriptures. He says, some of them are hatred, contentions, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, and dissensions. These are very much, when you think of gentleness and you think about the opposite of gentleness, he lists some of those work of the flesh right there, and those are, are hatred, if you're not walking in the fruit of the spirit of gentleness, that there's there's a tendency in situ, some situations to to allow hatred to come in when something comes up in a situation with a person or whatever that that work of that flesh of hatred comes in or or contentions that those fights with with individuals whether they're close to us or or people we don't really know or even just random people um we know that there's contentions in the world we're living in where i mean it's more common to be approached and and by someone you don't even know and and for them to unload on on you something that is against you something that see you wearing or something that you're doing or not wearing or I mean, we're just seeing, you know, the, you see the masks and, and, and different mandates and different things. And it's just, you never know when somebody might come up to you and be like, and snap. And, and we know that there's contentions. Also, helpers of wrath, right? They're the same thing as, is definitely when we, we respond with outbursts of wrath, that's not being gentle. Selfish ambitions, you know, where it's just like, you know what? I'd rather not deal with that person. I'd just rather avoid it. I'd rather that situation. Or, and we know we're not supposed to, but that our flesh sometimes wants us to run away from situations when we need to face them straight on. And, but, but not facing them straight on in our own abilities, our own strength, our own wisdom, but to approach them with the leading of the Holy Spirit. And then dissension is very much the same thing of with contentions is this that um, really heated arguments and, and where there's just that friction. You, you leave a situation and you, not on good terms, per se. Very important to understand the works of the flesh, but also we need to understand what, what is the Holy Spirit wants to produce in us. It's very important. And, and one of the nuggets, one of the things I feel we need to understand is not only do we need the fruit of the spirit of gentleness working in our our known close relationships but we need this very fruit to be produced in us when it comes to those who we don't know very well or even those that we don't that we don't know at all that are just kind of passing by but also with those that specifically do not know Jesus we need the fruit of the spirit of gentleness produced in us when it comes to our interactions. Not only those that are our families, our close friends, and maybe not only just our acquaintances, but also those that maybe we meet for the first time or it's in passing by, or also those that don't know Jesus to that, up to that moment. We need the gentleness of the Holy Spirit. It's so important, especially in the day we're living in when everything is... There's so much um, high energy and, and frustration, and we know that what happens from the top tries to trickle down, you know, and, and, and ultimately tries to trickle down into what's happening in our world, tries to trickle down into the church, and tries to trickle down into our lives and into our Christian walks. And so it's so important that we don't allow the, the anxiety of life 
to take control, those works of the flesh, but to allow the Holy Spirit to take control in our lives and to produce beautiful things. We need this fruit of gentleness produced in us to really reach the lost and hurting people around us. We need gentleness. We understand that Jesus walked with a compassion and a meekness and a gentleness when it came to really ministering to the masses that that were had no that were what what is explained is as you know we know Jesus was moved with compassion to be gentle and and and, and that meekness when he when he saw people wandering like with a like sheep without a shepherd you know and he saw that he, there was a hungry people and he recognized that and he moved with a way that was going to really speak to them beautiful beautiful example that we have in Jesus Christ beautiful example of gentleness and and meekness and um um, he, he also adapted to situations that would meet the needs of the people. Beautiful, beautiful. Without compromise. He adapted without compromise. See, that's so important to understand is that there was no compromise, but he adapted. He adapted. Beautiful. You know, not only we look at Jesus as our prime example, but look at the Apostle Paul. Um, and he went about reaching out to some tough people, tough crowds, and even some tough demographics. And um, very much an example to us. And, you know, you read in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1, it says, I, Paul, myself entreat you by the meekness and gentleness of man. No. He says, but by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. I, who, was, who am humble when face to face with you, but bold toward you when I am away. You know, so there's a, he, there are different types of interactions and, and, and how he adapted from when he was in person with them versus if when he was writing, from the, writing to them from afar. Very important to understand that. And all that Paul did with the leading of the Holy Spirit was to walk in that meekness and the gentleness of Christ. And to do what he was called to do. And, he, and he, he needed that. He needed that produced in him so that he could reach some of these. We know the church at Corinth. Corinth was a tough place. He needed that. And he looked at how he could adapt. Not by compromising in his faith and walk with Christ, but how he adapted in order to reach the lost in those moments. The leading of the Holy Spirit so important. See, Paul be, becoming adaptable to others around him so that he might minister to them and meet their needs, still walking in the fruit of the spirit of gentleness. So important. So important. I see, I think sometimes our flesh really wants us to, really wants, like I said earlier, wants to take over. And in the situations that call for extreme gentleness, especially in those instances, instances that seem harsh or even out of line. We have those moments just like just like bomb went off and you're just like unexpected. But I believe that in some of these moments, we really need to adapt with the help of the Holy Spirit so we can best respond that will be Christ-like. There's moments that we're going to have to adapt without compromise in our faith, but maybe moving in a way that we, we're not, we wouldn't usually or normally move into. And, you know, and I think you're catching what I'm trying to say here, catching the heart of it is that, is that God wants to, us to reach and to help in situations. And, and there's, there's situations that only with the help of the Holy Spirit and with his fruit of gentleness, his kindness, his goodness, let's just go back to, you know, some of the, the examples, you know, being friendly, compassionate, considerate, sympathetic. How does God want us to be sympathetic in moments that of, of, of maybe trauma, some things that are tragic that we really need something supernatural produced in us so that we will respond in the right way? Does it always mean that we will get a response that is 
that is good or favorable, but no, that, but to be, for us to be obedient in the way that we're supposed to respond is so important, no matter what the outcome might be. It's so important in that, how to, how to walk in that, that consideration, that sympath, being sympathetic, humane, and, and kind. So important, so important. That there's just, we need that supernatural producing in us so that we can adapt properly, move in a way that it's only God. You come, you come out of it, out of the situation, says, I was only God. That had nothing to do with me. That was not me. That's definitely not how Joe, his flesh, usually would handle a situation, you know. And I know how I can respond. I know how I can be. I, it, it, it's very scary, easy to walk in the flesh and, and, and how I, you know, you know, some things how I would respond and how I used to respond. And, and those tendencies, those things try that, that are familiar that try to, to take over that work of the flesh is always at work, always trying to fight with the spirit. We understand that, but we can, if we walk in the spirit, move with the spirit, not move in the works of the flesh. Walk in the works of the flesh. We can avoid those if we're walking in the spirit. And we need to be humble and 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 open and, and to receive the way he would want us to move. So important. You know, just an example, a scriptural example of the gentleness that we're to walk in is that in it, Proverbs 15.1, and this is the Amplified. It says, a soft and gentle and thoughtful answer turns away wrath, but harsh and painful and careless words stir up anger. So, it's so important in instances, and in how we respond is so important, is that a soft and gentle and thoughtful answer. I like how this transition added thoughtful. I really like that. Answer turns away wrath. It's amazing when we respond in a way like this, in a, in, in a heated situation, that it might catch the person off guard and say, wow, they didn't yell at me. They didn't, they didn't respond back with uh, uh, <laughs> a fireball coming from our, our tongue. <laughs> but it turns away wrath. It might just quiet, quiet a situation, quiet this person. And you know, God's ways are proven. God's ways are the, are the only way. And and we gotta, we got to be more attuned to the way that God responds, to how he handles situations. So important. So important. His gentleness produced in us changes us. His gentleness helps us to serve and meet the needs of others better and more effectively, whether they're in the church or outside the church walls, whether they're Christian or not Christian, that, that the gentleness of the Holy Spirit produced in us will change us and it will help us to serve and to meet the needs of others better and more effectively and that for his glory and for his honor you just we just never know what could happen in those instances we just just never know how what what volumes it speaks you know that when we when we respond with his gentleness you just never know only God knows. God works situations out behind the scenes that if we're just obedient and to, and to walk in his ways, I mean, God, God does his part, you know. We're not responsible for God's part. We're responsible for our part with the help of his spirit. We need the gentleness of God in the church and outside the church. There are people that need a gentle leading and a response as much um, as much there are people in our communities that need the same. You know, as they, and in the church, they need a gentle and, and leading and response. And also we have to understand that's the same for outside the church walls, that there's people that are needing in our communities that are needing a gentle leading and a gentle response that is going to lead them and show the love of Christ. It's going to lead them to Christ. It's going to, it's going to leave, uh, it's going to plant a seed. 
We plant seeds. We plant the word and truth. Just never know what would happen. So I encourage you just to really reflect and ask yourself questions on how am I being gentle? And, and, and do, do I need gentleness produced in me? How, where, where am I gauging at? And also, where can I change? Where, where, where do I need to change? Where do I need to adapt? I need your help, Holy Spirit. And he'll share those things without compromise. We don't, we don't adapt. <laughs> we know there's some teachings of this world. We know that are foolish that talk about, well, you just need to adapt to however, however you feel or however. If we go off of our own feelings, we're going to adapt in ways that are not good. But if, we, but if we say, God, how would you have me adapt in this situation? And how would you move, have me move? It's so important. And he'll share that with you. And it's, you read it through his word. How, you read it in the lives of those in, in scripture. How did they move? How did they walk? What made them tick? And we'll, we'll, we find those for our example. So important. So I just bless you. And I hope you have a great rest of your evening, great rest of your week. And we look forward to, to worshiping with you on Sunday here at River Life Church International. God bless you. Have a great rest of your week.